class warfare, Google buses. This year's San Francisco Mime Troop production of The Ripple Effect, well, it has everything except Godzilla. And with us is one of its cast members, Keiko Shimamota Carrera. Thank you. I hope I didn't mess up your name too much. No, it's Keiko Shimosato Carrero. I, I apologize. Good. You said the Godzilla thing messed yeah. me up. I got into that. <laughs> now, you are a San Francisco Mime Troop veteran, correct? Yes. I started off as the newbie, and 26 years later, I am a veteran. <laughs> now, for those people who are not familiar with the San Francisco Mime Troop, you and I both know it has nothing to do with mime. No. We're very loud. <laughs> you were very, you're very <laughs> loud and very free and very much in Dolores Park opening July 4th. But you know, a question I've always wanted to ask and never have is how did its name come about, the okay. Mime Troop? Why are we called the Mime Troop? Well, in its original form, when R.G. Davis started the company, it was actually Silent Mime. Mm -hmm. um, and it the, it actually follows the definition of mime, which is in the dictionary, as an expression of daily life in movement, dance, and song. So what we do is still mime. It's not silent. We do political musical theater, mm -hmm. but it is still, by dictionary definition, mime. <laughs> now, my understanding of the mime troupe is that it is very much a commune, that the productions that we see on stage, I should say on the grass, on the uh -huh. lawn at Dolores Park, are a collaborative effort. It comes out of what the members of the collaborative want to see that year, correct? Right. We're we're a collective and all the members of the collective, I think there's well, I can't remember exactly how a many lot. we have no, there's about ten of us. Mm -hmm. Um and we decide sitting around a round table all together what is important to us, you know, this year. What do we want to talk about? So we come up with the ideas collaboratively, and then we come up with the artistic creative process also collaboratively. Now, this year's production is called Ripple Effect. Yes. Tell me where that title came from, and what I'm really most interested in is, as a collective, when did you decide that what is going on now in mm -hmm. San Francisco, this quote-unquote class warfare, mm -hmm. was a good subject for this year's political musical theater piece? Okay. That's an interesting question, because we had to come up with the title uh, when we applied for the NEA grant last year. <laughs> so we came up with ripple effect knowing that anything that happens is going to have a ripple effect in our community. Um, so that's how the title came around. Pragmatic. How, I'm yes. glad to hear that's, I, that's so honest. <laughs> I love it. And then as, as um, what's happening with, with um, skyrocketing rents and developers taking over the city and people having to move out was hitting all of us. You know, mm -hmm. each on an individ individual basis. Our artist friends are having to move out of the city, move to the East Bay, or even further. And it just was hitting us, like, it, you know, personally. Mm -hmm. And we decided we've got to talk about this. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how the, the subject matter came, came about. about. Yeah. And what is the plot? The plot. I know it's always very broad. It is. Um, so. We start off with three women from different walks of life, three San Franciscans. Um, there are also three different generations. So my character is Sunny Nguyen. I'm a Vietnamese immigrant um, in my 40s, mother of one. Um, and then there's another young woman who's one of the new um, Techies who are. <laughs> She's one of the riders She's, of the Google bus. Yes, she is. And then there's another woman. She's the older generation activist, San Franciscan. And these three women who would normally never meet, maybe, and certainly wouldn't trust one another, end mm -hmm. up on a boat together on the San Francisco Bay on a boat tour. And so they're kind of captive in, in this um, one. Kind of confined They're all location. in the same boat. Exactly. We're all in, and we are all in the same boat. Exactly. Yeah, I, I'm getting. <laughs> it's kind of like the Three Graces meets Life of Pi. Right. I, yeah. So in flashbacks, each of the women tells their story of how they came to be here, um, and oh gosh, I don't want to reveal too much, but it's revealed that the Google bus rider has created an app, which. Um, the Vietnamese mom finds amazingly useful in keeping track of her daughter. Uh -huh. you know, she can make sure that her daughter isn't talking to the wrong boys or mm -hmm. wearing too low cut a dress. I can see where she's going, what you get back home, do your homework. 
And of course, the older activist thinks this is terrible. How could you possibly, you know, want to have an app like this? Surveillance. Surveillance. Yes. So kind of like what has happened with yeah. the NSA. So Eric Snowden may make yes. an appearance, something like that. <laughs> well, maybe in the virtual world. Yes. Um, so it's kind of looking at how we got to this place in this in in the city where um, people who really need to work together to I mean there I don't know what the solution is for the skyrocketing rents right. or people wanting to v develop San Francisco but if we don't work together it's right. not gonna happen. So you know to use uh, not that I often do this but the tagline for Fox News is it fair and balanced I mean <laughs> is the activist all correct is the Google bus rider all wrong no, that's the thing, is the way that we're looking at it, each one of them has a personal bias. Um, my character, Sunny, um, came here in the early 90s, um, so to, to escape what was happening in Vietnam. So she's, she's a boat person. Mm -hmm. And because of that, has a very, very patriotic slant on America. Mm -hmm. you know, everything here is wonderful. I'm so lucky to be here. You people are crazy. You know, uh -huh. how could you not love America? And the Google girl is, you know, she's very focused on just. She has a lot of work to do, and she's making the world a better place. So that's kind of her focus. Mm -hmm. And the activist. Um, Nobody could ever do it the way that they did it back right, in the day. Right, right, right. Um, and you know, how could you love anything about America when, right. when the, yeah? What have you learned about yourself from doing this production? I mean, you know, San Francisco is by definition and certainly by history one of our more political cities on the planet, certainly mm -hmm. in the world. We talk about everything. Right. I mean, you know, where two or more are gathered, I mean, there is a constituency group. Um, <laughs> is is the mime troupe still as lefty progressive as it once was? And what does that mean? And are you? Um, is the mime troupe collectively? I like to think yes. Um, and what I'm what I'm finding while I'm doing this show is that my leanings are more left sometimes than I thought they were. I mean, it's mm -hmm. like on a daily basis, I just sort of have to, I have to pay my bills and take care of my son and da, da, da. And when it comes to seeing what's happening and watching my neighbors have to leave um, mm -hmm. because they, they can no longer pay the rent or they're getting kicked out, I'm like something must be done. Mm -hmm. What can I do? Um, I can't do it by myself. And so that's what we're kind of discovering in the Mime Troop Collective, I mm -hmm. think, through this show is like, uh, we've really got to listen to these other communities, including the Google bus riders. Right. It's like, what's their story? Who are these people? We can't just hate them. And it's the same thing with all the older activists who are telling us that, oh, you know, your message is milk toast. You're not as as mm -hmm. radical as you should be. Or, well, we need to listen to them too. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> listening to you talk about it, it sounds like a bit of a tight rope walk, even for the mime troupe, yeah. which is used to tight rope walking. I mean, you know, I remember there was a period in the 80s and 90s where it was all bush bashing and, you know, and anti this, and yeah. it was very political and sometimes very partisan. Mm -hmm. But now, literally, in a very real geographic way, Dolores Park is the epicenter of what's going on. Yeah. You know, a lot of artists who moved to San Francisco live in that area. Now they can't mm -hmm. afford to live there. You can see the condos that are being built. Sure, sure. The Google buses are going by. Mm -hmm. Is anyone in the cast a little worried that maybe this year's is a little too hot to handle? Um, it's certainly of the moment. Actually, you're making me wonder that right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I don't think it's too hot to handle because we use comedy. Mm -hmm. And I certainly hope that we can all laugh at ourselves. And I, I don't know personally the people who ride the Google buses. I mean, I know a couple people in my neighborhood who've moved in. We don't talk much, but I'm very curious to see if we can get them out to the parks to come see the yeah. show um, on their days off, if they have any. But I'm hoping that it will spark some conversations right. and dialogue, because we need that. Right. In our last few moments, talk to me about the Mime Troop itself. How has it changed as, an, as a collective in the years you've been uh, part of it? Oh, well, 
I think in the past 10 years, some of the people who were original members when I joined, they all left kind of at the same time. And so now those of us who are there are, have been there within the past uh, 10, 15 years. We have a lot of new young members. And so I feel like it's just a cycle. It's different. Mm -hmm. um, and we're trying to listen to the people under 30 mm -hmm. and hoping that uh, but it's still, but it's still, it's still political. It's still oh, edgy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, in our last few seconds, I just want to make sure everyone knows where to see yeah. it. It opens July fourth. Yes. Runs to September first every yes. weekend in San Francisco's Dolores Park, and it's all free. Yes, it is. In one word, how would you describe the San Francisco Mime Troupe? We are. Um, we're loud and we're <laughs> still going. <laughs> loud and still going. We're loud and still going on ten percent, and we'll see you next week. Thanks.